Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Sustainiacs with Mr. Michael Vincent, podcast extraordinaire. How are you doing today, Michael? I'm doing great, man. Peace and love, my brother. And Peace and love. Else <laughs> What's Absolutely. going on today, man? Besides, it's a beautiful day here in Chattanooga, by the way, man. I was going to like, say. We're yes. having like 65 degree days, but it's like 45, 50 in the morning. So it's like cold, but then it warms up nice and quick. It, man, it, this is the weather like in the fall when it starts doing this in the fall where I just, I, I still wake up 37 years later, 33 years later. I still want to put on a football helmet and just hit somebody. <laughs> in my in my case i want to get out there on a soccer field and slide tackle somebody there you go you know you know what i'm talking about you know i mean all those two days and three days and and camps that you went through that would just beat you to death and you're ready to just quit for you know my case 16 years i played now i smell i get that there's that one morning every year where you wake up and you go oh yeah i wish i was back there right <laughs> I'll never forget. This reminds me. You remember when Olivia Newton-John and uh, the the Jazzer size aerobics craze was going on? Let's get physical. Yes. Physical. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I had a soccer coach that decided one year for training that we were going to do aerobics at one of those studios. Oh, nice. And all of us were looking at each other with all these pictures of people in neon and so forth going, what are we doing here? What is going on right now? My wife loves those old, like, 80s neon, you know, just a random triangle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Absolutely. Like that. yeah. That's Saturday Night Fever type of stuff. <laughs> yes. Right? I mean, it's very, yes. very similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did um, we did ballet. We did ballet. Uh, once we got to high school, we started doing ballet, and we had to do um, – um, was it positive mental imagery? We 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 had to do that type of stuff. Had to read the book uh, Psycho Cybernetics, and we had to log like an hour or two hours of free. It was either an hour or two hours of uh, meditation in, uh, you know, um, positive mental imagery. Yeah, very interesting. We were all we felt like a fish out of water, basically. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. What are we doing here? What in the world is going on right now? But we we lived through it, you know. We survived, so yeah, absolutely. I I, I I'm I'm with you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, lead paint, no seat belts, all that stuff. Absolutely, no problem. No problem. Nobody you know, ever, today I mean, you and I, Michael, we're going to be talking about companies and individuals charged with allegedly deleting emission control systems. So, uh, well, you know, what, I, yeah, yeah. And uh, very interesting story there. It reminded me, you know, of a story I heard about Harvard students cheating. And uh, I, I bumped into an article. I was uh, pulled it up, actually, and was kind of looking back because I remember hearing about this. And um, I, I mean, that was like 11 years ago, dude. And you remembered it. I do remember that. And I, then take, not, I, take half the, of, I take back half of what I said about you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then in more recent history all over the news was famous parents getting their kids into schools utilizing false credentials that happened right so like in 2012 they were cheating the kids were che cheating on uh they were plagiarizing and swapping answers in a course called introduction to congress <laughs> <laughs> right. which i think is perfect actually <laughs> i can imagine the introduction to congress book is like this big like this <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think the problem is they failed because they got caught right i think the course was how to do all this stuff but not get caught right is what it was and getting caught was the thing they, they flunked out of harvard because they got caught cheating right yeah and they did a massive survey, anonymous, and they made sure it was very careful to be anonymous. So if you <laughs> <laughs> of incoming freshmen, right? Right, incoming freshmen. So I'm going to read something from this article I found. <laughs> it said 10% of Harvard's incoming freshman class recently admitted to cheating on exams prior to heading to the Ivy League institution. And another 42%, 42%, admitted to cheating on a homework assignment or a problem set 
the university school newspaper, the Crimson, reported. Wow. 42%, so it, that's almost half. I, well, I don't have a Harvard degree, but I'm guessing you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> so so let me ask you this, I, I, I don't know about you, Michael, but I never cheated on homework in high school. Yeah, no, me neither. Mm -mm. And, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you, but if you're like, you're accepted to Harvard, right? And then you get this, anonymous survey you answering that thing i don't know that i'm answering it with all the things i cheated on on homework in high school yeah i, I don't i don't buy the 42 percent because there's no way a hundred percent of the people who cheated said yeah you know what this seems legit i'm going to tell harvard yeah that i that i cheated i, I would say the number realistically is more like 98.9 percent .9 or something like that but it, it is and i mean here, here's the thing <laughs> So here's the thing. You think anybody cheated to get into the local uh, community college? Mm, you don't have to cheat a lot. I don't think. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it, it, it's Harvard, man. Of course they cheated to get in there. You can yeah. you're trying to get into Harvard and you're this close. You need that one little edge. Of course you are. I mean, come on, come on man. I mean, it, it, the institution and the pressure and its prestige and the glory of getting that sheepskin if we can say that still, I don't, are we allowed to call it a sheepskin still? <laughs> I, don't I think know. You so. Know, you, I don't know. For all you non-vegetarians, it was called a sheep, sheepskin. Um, you know, that pressure is going to put kids to do something, right? I mean, you know, I mean, you need that little, you need that little bump, especially what was it? There was, um, athletes were more likely to. Yep. Right. Right. Yes. Which more is, likely. I mean, right. Yeah. But okay. So how much of that is pressure coming from directly? I mean, the other one is indirect because of the prestige and you want to get in there. Right. How much of like the athletics is the athletic staff really needs Andy Hedrick because he can kick the hell out of that soccer ball. I mean, he can, he can break a plate from, from mid from mid mid pitch you know what i'm saying <laughs> right but he, but he can barely spell his own name how how many <laughs> you know what I mean? how much of that is going on right oh yeah I mean, it doesn't it make sense that the athletes would cheat more it does it does I think so too. absolutely i, I think, think so. they're probably getting these tutors that are doing about half of the assignment for them most likely well, I mean, it, once you get once the athlete gets into school, that's what they're doing. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I love the movie The Blind Side, and uh, it was showing just how hard I forget his name, Michael, had to work to get through to the level that he had to have a scholarship at an NCAA one, Division One oh, thing. Man. I mean, they had a team of people basically helping to make sure that that went right. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's, I, I mean, love that now, movie. It's now it's much more. It's even bigger money now, right? Because it'll get that pressures are going to get worse and worse with NIL, which I, I don't disagree with. You know, the players um, getting paid. You know, I have I have a buddy who went uh, Division One and you know blew his knee out, and that was it. I mean, you know, now what's he going to do? Uh, uh, after, yes. after after his name sold X number of tickets and his likeness made X number of dollars and his jersey made X number of dollars, now he's going to graduate with business admin admin um, and probably take four or five years just to make the gross income of off of his. You know, a, 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 anyway, no, I agree um, with that. But the I think paid. that uh, I think that the college athlete should get something. In my personal opinion, they're going to have to put some limits on train on uh transfers and who you know like the franchise tag and all that stuff now that we have money involved you know right. i think that's probably right. coming most right. likely right yeah so i mean so these people are trying to cheat to get into a college that's going to better their entire world what about these um 11 11 guys up in <laughs> Up in up in Michigan, that allegedly were deleting emission controls from 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 vehicle. Right, these are service companies, I believe, is what they were. Right, and trucking services. Right. Yes. Diesel Diesel Freak uh, LLC in Gaylord, Michigan, accurate truck service, 
Accurate Truck Service, LLC in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Griffin Transportation. I think Griffin is actually an asset bear, uh, carrier. Um, but uh, yeah, so these guys, che- and this isn't alleged anymore because I, I read the other day, I think it might have been today, one of them uh, pled guilty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they're deleting the emission control systems to try and get around the Clean Air Act. Though I'll read a little thing from this article in Overdrive. Yeah, uh, no, I mean, I, did these guys like? Uh, did they come from Volkswagen? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Formerly Volkswagen. It was there. It was, there. It was right over the plate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it says three companies and eleven individuals have been charged with violating the Clean Air Act in an aftermarket scheme to disable the emissions control systems of heavy duty trucks. I yep. think that's uh, that's a whole different level of cheating going on there. Uh, they're just trying to get around um, running dirty, as you would call it. You know, uh, they're just trying yeah. to play the system. Yeah, they, they are. I mean, they're they're trying to. Uh, I mean, what are they afraid? What are they, they're uh, lower performance with those emissions controls? Is that what it was? Or is you know, a lot of it for? probably has to do with a couple of things that I've heard from fleet. Okay. Owners, okay. Number one is the DEF fluid, right? You got to keep that DEF fluid rolling and you got to fill it up in that little tank. You got to buy it at the store, all that. Right. But then secondly, um, those diesel particulate filters, they clog over time. Right. And they have to be changed out. So I think it was probably just, if I had to guess a money thing, like I'm not spending money on that. I'm not spending money on that. I'm deleting all of this stuff. Yeah. That's my guess as to what they were doing. Yeah. 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 And I mean, it wasn't like a, a one or two is 362 violations <laughs> Oh, ouch! For, for diesel, for diesel freak. <laughs> 362 times they did it. Wow. Accurate truck service. Accurate truck service was uh, just new to the game. Uh, 83 deletions. And um, Griffin transport shit says, at least 12 so yeah at least at least 12 and we don't know how many trucks they actually had that could have been 100 percent of their fleet i i don't know yeah but yeah well, I mean, i've mentioned they, so, to you before michael we we talked about harvard yeah during covid harvard did a massive study of covid illnesses and deaths and what they they found was the areas where there's more population and there's higher emissions levels Ah, was higher instances of COVID and a higher percentage of death rate. And it's basically, you know, emissions um, are hard on our lungs and our hearts, frankly, over the course of time, you know, it all ties together, right? You can't disconnect your heart from your lungs and your lungs from your liver and it all works together. So if it's affecting your lungs, it's affecting your heart. It's affecting your health. So uh, they're unfortunately just saying, I just don't, uh, don't want to comply. Yeah, I, I agree is, is what they did. I mean, and it, it, you're right. I, it, it has to be a money thing. Cause it wasn't like they're going out there going, Hey, I want to kill people. Right. No. I do my, uh, we're going to kill them real slow and sneaky. We're, we're mass murderers, but we use nitrous oxide coming out of our exhaust. <laughs> right? No. Um, I don't think that was the motivation of it. No, I don't think so either. I, I don't think so either. But you're right. I mean, you if you if you if they're doing it for like fuel economy or something like that or whatever the cause, the fuel economy, the maintenance, uh, and, and all that type of stuff, right? Is is you don't have to cheat to do that, do you? I mean, how, it, what it would, because they're 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 waiting for hydrogen. Well, you know, I didn't really properly introduce, honestly, you at the front of the show. You're helping uh, alongside of me with cyber fuels. We're reducing emissions. Right. We're reducing fuel consumption, which is another thing that causes emissions. And then you're also president and CEO of OPT USA, bringing monetary gains for plas- through plastic recycling. Right. Um, right. So we're out there working on fuel reduction, emissions reduction, plastic reduction, all with yeah. monetary gains, actually. With monetary gains. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From from both of those those things. I'm glad you picked up on that. I was trying to lob these over so you would start talking about cyber fuels. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I'll but have yeah, our no, I mean, I'll that's have... what I'm saying is these guys just don't know what's going on. And luckily enough for you people in the audience watching this, we're about to tell you that you can use cyber fuels. It'll do the same thing. It, 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 it's not going to get you a, a million dollar fine, which you'll plead down to $750,000, right? It's going to put $750,000 potentially in your pocket because depending on how many trucks you're driving and where you're going, you're going to get what, eight to 20 plus percent better fuel mileage? Yep, we've right? got studies out in the field and labs that are 8% to 31% better fuel economy. And we're averaging, you know, 26 to 95 cents savings per gallon of fuel. Think about that. 26 wow. to 95 cents savings per gallon of fuel that you use. That is, I know some people who would love to have a card that they could just pull up to the diesel pump and go, yeah, I'll take uh, 26 cents off a gallon. <laughs> exactly. Right? I mean, I would. would. I'm, I'm in line for that. Yeah. I mean, so it wouldn't take long for like, say, a, a, a night swift to 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 realize seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in savings. Right? No, not very long at all. No, no, no. <laughs> Be very and they'd probably have to yeah. do a few more than uh, three hundred and sixty two uh, deletions of <laughs> emissions controls. <too. laughs> yep, exactly. So, you know, Michael, it's fun always talking with you, podcasting with you. We're out there doing things in the sustainability area that help monetarily while reducing waste and emissions, you know, right um, that's what we're out there doing. Um, and uh, so fun podcasting with you, man. It is. Hey, I love it too. Did you catch fish over the weekend, by the way? I did. I actually first time ever caught a rainbow trout on a fishing trip with a buddy I've known for 35 years, never caught a trout before. Wow. I'm usually bass fishing, you know, catfish fishing, cr crappie in Oklahoma on the lakes. But we we did a little river fishing on the lower Illinois and uh, got my first rainbow trout ever. Nice. Did you catch and release or are you cooking them babies up over fire? Catch and release in our case. I didn't want to try and keep fish on ice for three or four days in my cooler and ruin my cooler. Is that bad? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Now we did, we did catch and release. Um, so, you know, just, we do, we were just out there honestly to get away into the trees and the river and fish for a while. And uh, it was really awesome. Frankly. You just dropping a line or you fly, you go fly fishing or what do you. In our case, we did not do fly fishing. We did a line with a lure, a uh, minnow lure. We tried, we tried some of these uh, bugs basically that yeah. the fish love and, We'd put them like three feet off the top of the water and just let them and just let them run, and yeah, nice. they would hit on it. Boom, you know. Nice. Yeah, that's fun. That's a lot of fun. It Maybe was. It was good. It was awesome. Honestly, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, maybe people will use more cyber fuels and we'll keep those rivers clean so you can keep fishing, man. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I guess that's going to do it for this episode of the Sustainiacs podcast with Michael Vincent. Thanks for listening or watching, everybody, and we will see you again soon. Take care. Right on. Peace and love. Peace and love.